Dr. Fizz here on Theoretical Physics, Chapter F, Let There Be Light. Before we look at the Maxwell equation and show that they allow for a wave equation in the electric and magnetic fields, we're going to look at the wave equation in its own right. What is a wave? A wave is a traveling disturbance or a propagating disturbance. So I have made here a function to represent a wave, like a little crest for a water wave. And this uh, treatment, by the way, can represent any any wave, uh, water waves, sound waves, uh, light waves. If we're dealing with sound waves, this represents a compression region in the air because a sound wave is longitudinal. Or this can represent for a rope wave a transverse a wave as a rope where you shake the rope up and the wave is going to travel to the right. It can represent a water wave. It can represent any kind of wave, you name it. So here we have this arbitrary function could stand for any any shape and to shift it to the right I claim the answer is the function of x minus d. So I define h of x as f x minus d and I want to check to see if that indeed is the function by checking where the peak is. f of 0 is peak. What is h of d? In other words, the new function evaluated down the road, d. Well, h of d would be f, the quantity d minus d in the argument, and that's f of 0, and that is peak. So that shows it. Be careful here. Plus d to the right gets the minus d here. If you should make the mistake and say, hey, if I move the right plus d, I put a plus d there, you actually move the wave the wrong way to the left. So plus d goes with a minus d in the argument. When you took your trigonometry, you've seen something like this before. There are always shifting functions in trigonometry. Here are the green function, cosine of x. If we shift that by pi over 2, we get the red one which is the sine. So sine of x is the cosine of x minus pi over 2. And this also tells you that in a right triangle, where you, of course you have a right angle and two other angles that add up to 90 or pi over 2, that those angles are complementary and the cosine of one of those angles is equal to the sine of the other, the complement. A neat result. Let's look for a differential equation that solves the traveling wave. So I let d equal vt and now I have a function traveling to the right. I will call the function psi, since physicists like to call waves psi in optics and also in quantum mechanics, the wave function is called psi. I define u as x minus vt, and I note that the partial of u with respect to x is 1, the partial of u with respect to t is minus v. Now if we look for a differential equation for which that's the solution, it's time to take some derivatives. So that's what we do here. We take the partial derivative of psi with respect to x and we're going to use the chain rule. So that's the partial with respect to x of what psi equals. Just replace the substitution. And note that f is a function of u. And when I do this, I can take the regular derivative of f with respect to u and the partial of u with respect to x. Partial of u with respect to x is 1. So we simply get du df du and you might say you haven't done anything what is this well no we're doing the most general function this is actually good this is what we want to do if we come down to the partial with respect to t we replace the x with t and everything is the same except here du dt minus v and then we have finished the two we can set these now to be equal if we're careful with the uh, constant the f velocity the partial of psi with respect to x is the partial of psi with respect to t divided by the minus v so that the, this will cancel and you have an equation, a differential equation. I emphasize that this is only for traveling to the right by putting the subscript here because if v should be negative going the other way you have a problem. Then v becomes positive and you have a different differential equation. This is not acceptable. In physics the equation must be the same for right and left. Often you, you hear the, the comment isotropy of space which means that the physics like should be the same in all of the dimensions, spatial dimensions, so we can't have that. Well we look for a second derivative 
case because by taking the derivative again then we can see another minus v will pop down and get you a v squared. So that's kind of the logic in doing the second derivative in search for a differential equation. We're looking for the second derivative and this is a partial differential equation since the equation will have partials. So we do uh, the same thing again. We take the uh, derivative of uh, psi with respect to x another time. So this is the result that we had before. So I want the derivative of this with respect to x. That will get me the second derivative. And I use the chain rule again. The second derivative of f with respect to u, partial u with respect to x. That gives me a 1. So I get just that second derivative. And here with the t, I do the same thing. Before I had this result for the first derivative with respect to t, put that in there, take the derivative again using the chain rule. I'll get the second derivative of f with respect to u du dt, which is the other minus v, which we need desperately here to hit this minus v to get plus v squared. And now we have a partial differential equation. This is the wave equation, one dimension, where the solution is a superposition of two waves, one traveling to the right, one traveling to the left in general. As you know from a, a math, we have a second uh, order differential equation you have then two functions that solve the two independent functions. Here is the result in three dimensions. We replace, replace these partials with uh, the partials with respect to x, y, and z. Uh, we had one dimension here, just the x, and now we have y and z. And we can use the del operator to write this in a very, very elegant fashion. Del dot del will give us i dot i as a non-zero contribution and it'll be the second derivative with respect to x and then j dot j for the second derivative with respect to y and k dot k. This is called the Laplacian. Del dot del can be written like this, del squared. And using that our wave equation takes on the most beautiful form. Del squared of psi is 1 over v squared the second derivative of psi with respect to t, and remember the velocity goes with the t, so the dimensions come out right, and we have the dimensions of distance squared, in each case, in the denominator.